to you in peace in the name of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I greet you on this Sunday morning, March the 10th, 2024, the fourth Sunday in Lent as this service of worship emanates from the sanctuary of St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church located on the corner of East 40th Street and Central Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, where I, Henry Curtis, serve as pastor. So as we greet those of you in our congregation this morning, and as we greet those of you who are worshiping with us online, let us stand to our feet, join the choir in singing hymn number five, all five verses, all hail the power of Jesus' name.
said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For in my courts is that the house. I read the authority of the house of my God, and to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. And those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth be silent before him. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. O sing to the Lord in his song, for he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, and all the earth sing praises. Please be seated, it is prayer time. And at this time, you may bring your joy, sorrows, and concerns to the altar if you have special prayer. Or if you want to come to this altar as an intercessor for somebody that you are praying for, this is your time to come to the altar and to bring your burden to the Lord and not take it back with you, but leave it here, knowing that God can do more for us than we can think of and or ask. And our online worshiping congregation, wherever you are, you may make your space your personal prayer closet as you petition God in prayer. Let us go to the throne of grace as Brother Presley comes to lead us. Praise God, everyone. As we go to the Lord in prayer, let us think about all those persons who are on our sick list, who are going through various stages of recovery, those who are dealing with death and bereavement. Just keep those persons in your mind. So we said this morning, it says, Lord, we come to you with Bow heads and humble hearts, Lord, to give you thanks for all, all, all the many blessings that you have given to us to this point, Lord. You, we thank you, Lord, for our peaceful sleep last night and, and our early rise this morning, and that we have clothing, we have shelter, we have food, and most important, Lord, we have you in our lives. And we say thank you for that right now. And now, Lord, we ask that you look upon those persons who have gone through death and bereavement. Lord, we ask that you just keep your loving arms around them and strengthen them as they go through and deal with grief because grief is a terrible thing and we know that we can do all things through you who strengthens us and we know that and we believe in that and we are receiving it in your precious name we say today thank you and now lord we ask that you look upon all those persons who are sick who are dealing with mental illness who are dealing with fighting cancer who are fighting any diseases that is not of you lord we ask that you strengthen us Heal our bodies from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet, Lord, because we need you right now, Lord. We need you right now. And Lord, we just ask you to look across this church, look at our ushers on the door, give them strength, give them the ability to welcome in our church members, our guests, and to welcome in the Holy Spirit as we begin to serve you today, because all hell is in you. And then we ask you to look at our choirs. As they sing the songs of Zion this morning, Lord, that we thank you for them and, and all of our other members of this church, Lord, we say thank you. We give you the praise, Lord. We say give you all the almighty praise that we deserve. And most importantly, Lord, we says look upon our pastor as he continue to be our shepherd of this flock here, Lord, and give him the strength to continue to march forward. Because I know sometimes the load may get a little heavy, it may get a little distressing, but you know, we know that when the times get hard, that you are there to carry him the rest of the way. And I think about this one, think about the poor footprint. That's when, when things get too heavy for him or for us, there's only one foot set of footprints in the sand. And that's when you are picking us up and carrying us the rest of the way. And for that, Lord, we are saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because we are believing and we are knowing that you are hearing our prayer this morning. And we know that you are going to do all things that is possible for us. And we say thank you, Lord. We give you the honor and we give you the praise to Almighty God. And we say amen, amen, amen. 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 amen.
May you please stand. Today we will be reading John chapter 3, verses 14 through 21, for God's standard version. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. We shall all say this verse together, because we all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent the Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe in him is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does what is true comes to the light that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been wrong in God. Amen. The word of God for the people of God from all that dwell below the sky. Amen. out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Yeah. 
let snow stop you this morning. You can let the temperature drop stop you this morning. So if you're here to praise the Lord this morning, let's give your feet to show him, show him that we're here to praise him this morning. to proclaim what thus saith the Lord. We welcome each and every one of you here. If this is your very first time here at St. John, uh, we welcome you. You are only a stranger once. Please come see us again. And if you're back with us for the first time in a long time, welcome back. It's great to see you today. And to our online worshiping congregation, God bless you wherever you are. Please be sure to say good morning to us and good morning to one another in the chat and let us know that you are safe and well, for those of you outside of the Cleveland area, we got hit with a double whammy. The times went forward and we had a nice snowstorm. So, but God is good. We made it anyway. We thank God that he allows us to gather safely. And I think the choir, I think they set their clocks and they went to bed early because they were on fire today. Amen. Amen. The time change in the snow did not slow them down. And we praise God for them. Thank you for your ministry among us. Our gospel lesson today, and thank you, Stephen, for reading that, and the Holy Spirit really worked with him to have us all say John 3, 16 together. And this is a very familiar passage of Scripture, but you notice that it begins in the 14th verse and goes to verse 21. And our key verse today is going to be John 3, 18, where it is written, He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Amen. On this fourth Sunday in Lent, I'd like for you to think with me and pray with me on the theme relevant to our subject matter, belief determines destiny. Let us pray. Lord, speak to me that I may speak. In living echoes of thy tongue, as thou hast sought, so let me seek thine erring children lost and lone. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Christ's holy name we pray, amen. When I was in high school, Cliff's Notes was a handy tool that helped me through English literature classes. How many of you can say amen to that? Amen. Though not a substitute for reading the actual text, Cliff Notes neatly summarized the main themes and made it easier to understand the material. In all of literature, both sacred and secular, the Bible is the most read and known book. 
While many people are familiar with the Bible, the fact remains that many people do not understand it. But God reveals himself to us through the witness of sacred scripture. From Genesis through Revelation, we see a connected group of writings that are connected by the common thread of God's interaction with and love for humankind. Recorded in the Bible are instances where God's relationship with humankind is strained. We see the cycle. We fall into sin. God gets mad. We repent. God forgives, rents, repeat, and the cycle goes on and on and on. Have you ever thought, my friends, about how you might sum up the Bible in just a few short words? Well, if you could, you wouldn't be the first to do that. That honor belongs to St. John the Evangelist and author of the gospel that bears his name. For St. John the Evangelist sums up the essence of the Bible in general and the Gospels in particular with words that most Christians can quote from memory. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. But don't just stop at verse 16. We need to read on to verse 17. And in verse 17, John says, For God sent the Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. As you read today's gospel lesson, we have to set it in its proper context. The context of today's lesson, which contains the famous John 3.16 verse, is actually a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. How many of you have heard of Nicodemus? And to better appreciate this, you have to read John, the first chapter, verses 1 through 13, which immediately precedes the verses that we're studying today. There we see Jesus encountering a Pharisee and a teacher of Israel, one named Nicodemus. And this Pharisee and teacher of Israel struggles to comprehend Jesus' teaching about the new birth. In John chapter 1 verses 3 through 5, the Bible says, Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born anew, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus was scratching his head and said to Jesus, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus says in verse 5, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. Now to be fair, church, Nicodemus was not the only one confused by Jesus' teaching. Other devout Jews in Jesus' time found it impossible to be born from above or to be born of water and spirit. In other words, Nicodemus and others like him could not wrap their minds around heavenly things because they were so fixated on earthly things. Jesus spoke to their unbelief. In John the third chapter verses 11 through 13 which leads us into our text beginning at verse 14. Here their unbelief is rooted in their misunderstanding Jesus' mission and refusing to submit themselves to scrutiny. Nicodemus and others like him had the wrong idea about the son of man's mission. But Jesus, knowing his audience, gave Nicodemus an illustration from the Hebrew scriptures that he would recognize and understand. Because in John the third chapter and the 14th verse, Jesus referenced the incident that we read about in Numbers the fourth, 21st chapter verses 4 through 9. And Jesus takes Nicodemus back to Numbers and he tells him, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, 
so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Nicodemus knew the story of Israel complaining about their food and complaining about their lack of water in the wilderness. And to make a long story short, in the book of Numbers, the 21st chapter, the Bible says the children of Israel spoke against God and against Moses, to which God responded by sending them poisonous serpents. The serpents bit the people and many of Israel died. And after they complained against Moses, guess what? They went back running to Moses to ask Moses to help them, to relieve them of this terrible situation. And the Lord told Moses to take a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And whenever the serpent bit someone, if that person looked at the bronze serpent, he or she would live. In a similar way, Jesus says to Nicodemus in today's gospel lesson, the Son of Man saves those who look on him. In the wilderness, God commanded Moses to make the people look at the image of the very thing they feared most, the poisonous serpent. And in today's gospel, Jesus teaches that in order for us to be saved, we have to look at him high and lifted up on the cross. A cross which is barbaric, a cross which is an inhumane instrument of death. But if you follow the logic, you will see that in order for us to gain eternal life, we must look at that which we fear most, that being death. So when Jesus says, when the Son of Man is lifted up, whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Children of Israel, you fear the serpent. But if you want to be saved from the serpent, you've got to see that serpent lifted up. Human beings, you're afraid of death. You take your vitamins, you, you run laps, you, you try to eat good, you try to drink good, you try to act good so that you can preserve this life a little while longer. But in order for you to defeat death, you've got to see Jesus high and lifted up, dying on the cross, not for himself, but for you. See, Jesus is clear about his mission. He knows that he was born to die. And as he died, he would rise again. Just as the poisonous serpents tormented the Israelites in the wilderness, sin torments us. The poisonous serpents were agents of death and destruction. And sin is an agent of death and destruction. For us to get past death and destruction, we must look upon the Son of Man who is lifted up on the cross. A cross that's an instrument of punishment and death by the Roman government. A cross that's an emblem of suffering and shame. A cross that symbols to all the condemned man hanging on it is despised and rejected. A cross that tells everyone who sees it that society is better off without the one hanging on. But don't be misled this morning, church. The cross is not merely a piece of joy, but the cross is a terrible thing. The cross was meant to put a criminal down, but on it, the Son of Man will be lifted up. What man means for evil, God will use for good. And according to Jesus, as he engages in dialogue with Nicodemus, when the Son of Man is lifted up, he will be glorified by God through his death. When the Son of Man is lifted up, he'll be glorified by God through his resurrection. When the Son of Man is lifted up, God will glorify him through his ascension. So don't forget... Jesus speaks the words recorded in John the third chapter to Nicodemus, one who was stuck in the flesh and could not wrap his mind around the spiritual things. See, we learned a good lesson today based on what Jesus taught Nicodemus over 2,000 years ago. That lesson is simply this, there's more to life than what we see. 
being born of our mother's womb brings us into this world. But there's more beyond this world. And to get there, Jesus tells us, you must be born again. The world is besieged by hatred and violence. We see evidence of this locally, nationally, and globally. But Jesus taught Nicodemus and he teaches us that God is a God of love. And Jesus Christ is the manifestation and embodiment of God's love for us. That's the essence of John 3, 16 and 17, which leads us to our key verse 18. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. St. John the Evangelist is clear in the Gospels about the nature of Jesus' mission. Simply stated, Jesus came to save. And those who look upon him with faith and believe in him shall be saved. And that ties directly into today's sermon title. Belief determines destiny. What you believe determines where you will go. Amen, Pastor Curtis. Here's a few, few quick illustrations to drive home the point. Gladys Richardson, I'm going to pick on you this morning. Gladys Richardson believes that she can play the piano. Gladys Richardson believes that she knows something about music. And her destiny is what? Being music director at St. John. Robert P. Madison, watching us, believes that he can draw. He believes that he has the mind to design great buildings. That what is his destiny? He's a world-renowned architect. Dr. Pam Redden believes that God blessed her with some scientific knowledge and some gifts and her destiny is helping restore people to health as a medical doctor. I believe that I've been anointed to teach God's word and to communicate the doctrine of the Christian faith. And what's my destiny? Pastor of St. John and elder of the church. Black people in Alabama and Mississippi and South Carolina believe that they can live a better life in the north and they have the great migration. See, your belief determines your destiny. See, some folks fail to reach their destiny because for whatever reason or reasons, they do not believe that it's possible for them. But Jesus makes it plain to Nicodemus and he makes it plain to us that if you believe in him and believe in his name, then your destiny is salvation. But if you don't, your destiny is condemnation. On this fourth Sunday in Lent, we have an advantage as it relates to getting our belief right so that our destiny will be desirable. You may ask the question, well, Pastor Curtis, what is that advantage? And I'm glad you asked that question because I have the answer for you. The advantage we have over Nicodemus is we have had 2,000 years of church history to hear the gospel. Nicodemus was hearing it for the very first time, but we've read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. We've read the Acts of the Apostles. We have the advantage of knowing the New Testament. When Jesus spoke to Nicodemus, the Holy Spirit was still alive. The Holy Spirit was active, but he had not yet been fully revealed because the day of Pentecost had not come. So everybody was not in on the fact that there is a Holy Spirit. But we have the Holy Ghost. We have him teaching us, leading us, and guiding us, helping us to interpret the word of God as it unfolds before our eyes. See, Jesus has had the same conversation with you and with me that he had with Nicodemus. And having heard from the Son of Man, we will by faith look on him as he is lifted up. Having heard from the Son of Man, we will believe in him. Having heard from the Son of Man, we who've heard the gospel and who've been anointed and touched by the Holy Ghost will believe 
in his name. Oh, my Holy Ghost imagination tells me that if the song were written, Nicodemus might have sung this song after his visit with Jesus. He would have said, there is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its work. Oh, it sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, I can hear Nicodemus say, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. How do I know he loved me? Because he came down through 42 generations. How do I know that he loved me? Because he has gone to the wilderness and faced temptation in the devil so that when I face the devil he'll be there with me because he's walked that walk. How do I know that he loves me? Because he's been to the Mount of Transfiguration where, where his face did shine. How do I know that he loved me? Because just as a woman with the issue of blood reached out and touched the hem of his garment, I've touched his hem and I've been made whole. How do I know that he loved me? Because I don't have to fear death because when I see my Lord high and lifted up, die on the cross, I can tell death there is no victory in grave. There is no sting. I don't have to fear death because Jesus said, no man takes my life from me. I lay it down and if I lay it down, I'll take it up again. I know he loves me because he died for me. I know he loves me because he shed his blood for me. I know he loves me because he took my sins to the grave. And I know he loves me because he got up with all power in his hand. And not only did he get up, but he loves me as he sits at the right hand of the Father, interceding on my behalf, saying, Lord, don't look upon his sins, but look at the blood. The choir was right. It was not the nail that held Jesus to the cross. It wasn't Pontius Pilate who put Jesus on the cross. It wasn't Caiaphas who put Jesus on the cross. But it was love, a agape love, a self-giving love. And because I have that faith, I'm not worried about my destiny. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, come into my life. Live your life in me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for teaching Nicodemus and teaching us of your immense, immeasurable, infinite love for us. Help us, Lord, to walk in the way of love and to share with others that which you shared with Nicodemus, that you loved us enough to save us. This and all things we ask in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We open the doors of the church, and if we have persons in our midst who have not accepted Christ as Lord and Savior in your life, we invite you to do so at this time. I walking down any one of these aisles, giving me as pastor your hand, but more importantly, giving Christ the Savior your heart. If you've already accepted Christ, but you do not have a church home, we offer St. John to you today. The doors of the church are open to our online worshiping congregation. You may join us by writing to us at St. John AME Church, 2261 East 40th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. You may call us at 216-431-2560 or email us at St. John AME Church C L E V at gmail.com. Let us stand as persons respond to the invitation.
It is offering time. And as we come to this time of offering, we thank God for God's bounty as he blesses us each and every day of our lives. And we give our tithes and offerings to God in grateful praise. We thank you, St. John, for your faithfulness in the giving of your tithes and offerings. And we continue to rely on you to help us to continue the ministry that God has placed us here to do. Thank you to our online worshiping congregation. You too may worship through giving by sending your check to St. John AME Church, 2261 East 40th Street, Cleveland, Ohio, 44103. You may also give through our Givelify digital giving app, St. John AME Church, Cleveland, Ohio. Let us give cheerfully to God who gives freely to us. Tuesday Bible study at 6 o'clock on our conference call, prayer and meditation at 6 a.m., and on Facebook and choir rehearsal at 6 o'clock. Also, March the 19th, we have our presidential uh, primary election. Vote by mail applications are due at the Board of Elections on March the 12th. So they have to be uh, in a week early in order to ensure that you get 
your ballot. If you do not have a vote by mail application in at the Board of Elections by the 12th, you will not get one by mail, but you may still go to your local Board of Elections and vote early and in person, and those early voting hours are before you. If you have any questions, you can go to your local Board of Elections website and to the Secretary of State's website as well. St. John's GCC core team monthly meeting, March 14th at 1.30 on Zoom. You may see Louise McKinney and Monday, Thursday, we will have worship here at St. John with Holy Communion at 6.30. I will preach and the choir will sing and GCC has a campaign to reduce medical debt and you may see Sister McKinney in the overflow for any voting information and GCC related information. And as always, know the number 988, just like you know the number 911, to help someone in a mental health crisis and save a life. We have a few uh, thank you notes to share with you. Uh, words of prayer and comfort and support strengthened uh, our family and our love has been sustained by you. And I extend my deepest thanks to you, my St. John Church family, for your kindness shown to me during the re recent uh, passing of my sister, Ms. Josephine Winters. I appreciate it more than words can express, and it will always be remembered, Sister Ann McPherson. And thank you for that wonderful rendition today. Amen. Amen. And we have a note of thanks from Sister Gladys Bass, uh, who thanks the uh, church and Francine Payton and Michael Payton for the church's uh, support in the loss of their grandson and nephew and son, Anthony Hodges, Jr. And also today we notice uh, one of our musicians is not with us, uh, Kyle Morris. We extend prayers to his family in the passing of his brother. So let us now have a moment of silence for his brother and offer our prayers. For his life that remains eternal in your love, O oh Lord, we give you thanks. Eternal rest grant unto him, and let perpetual light shine upon him. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us now stand for our closing song. Until then, goodbye.